Hey guys, it's Josh here. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create an overlapping logo that overlaps the top menu and then also shrinks down when you have a fixed navigation. Now, there have been a couple other tutorials around the community that I'll make sure to link to that show you how to do an overlapping logo in the menu, but I haven't seen anything that shows you how to overlap the top menu. And let me show you a couple examples of where I've used this trick. Here's a client that has a logo that is very text-driven, but it has this icon that's you know sitting pretty far above the text so in this case we originally had it in the menu bar but this the words looked really small when it was shrunken in there so I just expanded it and bumped it over the top menu to give it this look here's another example where I had a client that added this little anniversary tag and originally this was smaller but again this text looked really small and it was hard to read so I just expanded it and put it above the top menu and then I'm also going to show you in this case how to when you scroll down you'll notice the logo is going to zip down and nestle nicely into the menu on scroll. So that's a couple different looks and a couple reasons why you would might want to use this. Generally this works good for like vertical logos but in this case even a horizontal logo that has kind of a funky shape to it this can be really really useful. So let's go ahead and dive right in. The first thing that we need to do is you'll notice when you have a top menu generally your phone number and your email a lot of elements are going to be aligned on the left. So the first thing that we need to do is move those because if we put our logo over them it's going to conflict. So if you've followed any of my recent tutorials, you know that I love Chrome and Inspect Element. So we're gonna right click and inspect this. And you'll notice that the top menu has an ID, or at least these elements have an ID of ET info. So let's go ahead and look into the code and you'll see that these have a float of left. Let's go ahead and make these float to the right and then boom, just with a little change in the ET info ID right there, that's gonna float those to the right. So let's go ahead and save this code. And we're gonna drop this into our style sheet. I have a little section that is telling me this is where all the custom code is gonna go for overlapping logo that shrinks on scroll. So now that that's saved, let's go ahead and refresh and all that stuff should be to the right. Okay, so now we can see the phone number and email is floating to the right. Now we can start having some fun with the logo. So I'm gonna go into my inspect element toolbar here. I'm gonna click the select tool and I'm just gonna look at the logo itself. So you'll notice that in Divi, the logo has an ID of just plain old logo. Here's where we're gonna have some fun. You'll notice that this has a max height of 54%. Now you can adjust this in your logo settings in the theme customizer, but I prefer to use CSS when possible. And you're gonna have to, to achieve this look. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cancel that out. And you'll notice right when I do, that bumps the logo up to the original size. So you can see the logo is much bigger than that. So let's go ahead and dive in here and let's have some fun. I'm gonna create a new max height, but I'm gonna give this a height of, let's start out with 100 pixels instead of percent. We're gonna go ahead and try actual heights with pixels. So you can see that looks pretty good right there, but it's, it's overlapping. So now what we wanna to try to do is have some fun with my very favorite CSS snippet of margins. And in this case, we're gonna do margin top. And let's give this a negative margin of say uh, 20. Let's see how that looks. And there we go, you can see, and I can play around with this a little more. Let's bump this up to say 12, you know what, let's say 30. Yeah, there we go. So with a max height of 100 pixels and a margin top of negative 30, you can see we have, we've achieved that look and it looks awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this whole snippet of code. I'm gonna go into my style sheet, drop logo. We're just gonna delete all this because this is the code that's just you know laying on top of that that Divi, Divi already knows about. And it's that easy, guys. Now, th in this case, this is showing a design that does not have fixed navigation. So. Let, let me show you something here that's been really interesting that I had to find out the hard way. We're gonna go into my theme options and we are gonna give this a fixed navigation. So we're gonna go here to oh, fixed navigation bar. We're gonna enable that and we're gonna go ahead and save changes. Now, when we go back out to the site, let me show you what we see here. Oh, the logo is being covered up by the top header. It's so weird, it, it works fine if you don't have fixed navigation, but if you do have fixed navigation where we scroll down here, that logo is getting covered up. But, but I'm gonna show you the solution. All we have to do as we dive back into inspect element is we need to have some fun with what we call the Z index, which is the positioning of an element. So we can see that this top header here, actually let me, let me grow into right here with the ID, so top header, this fixed nav, you can see it's a position of fixed. Um, I haven't seen where you can find this code, but we can override it by giving this a Z index. 
of 999. Oh, you can see right there. I can just give it a Z index of 9. Um, but I found that you don't want to, you don't, I think the best thing to do is do 9998. Um, I found this out the hard way because other elements are going to overlap that if you don't have this exact code. So there we go. All you have to do is do Z index 9998. And I'm going to throw important right there just to make sure this knows about that. So first things first, let's go ahead and copy that segment of code. And we're going to drop in here. And this is going to tell the logo that once we zip down, it's going to keep it above it. Now, the last thing that we need to look at here is typically when you scroll down, your, lo your menu is going to drop a little bit. Now, you can adjust the height to make sure that that doesn't you know, scroll down at all. You could go into the theme customizer and you could adjust those settings. But in this case, you know, I like that. And I find that a lot of my clients will say, oh, that's a cool effect, how the logo kind of gets smaller when you scroll down. So we're going to use that. But in this case, I want to do the same look that I showed you here, where the logo scrolls in like that. And I'm using it in a site here as well, where they have a very vertical logo. This is actually where I came up with this trick is because they actually requested that that logo sit above the menu and that it drops in the menu. So on this one, when you scroll down zip it just kind of zips in there so what we're going to do is you'll notice when we scroll down here again the, the logo doesn't really move but what we want to do is we want to inspect this and i just want to kind of play around with where i want this to go so i'm going to give this a max height of even smaller let's do um yeah let's say 60 looks pretty good and then for the margin top we actually want to lower that we want to bring that back down to Maybe like five. Actually, you know what? We can probably bring that to zero. There we go. So we're going to do a max height of 60 and a margin top of zero once we scroll down. So what we need to do is I'm going to go ahead and bounce over to my style sheet. And I have some code saved. I'm going to show you how this looks. Okay, so I just pasted in this little snippet of code. This is again using what we just came up with for the logo with a max height of 60 and a margin top of zero. But you'll notice I added this little tag in front of it that says it's a class of ET fixed header. This, this is gonna make it so it does not conflict with the logo settings that we have here. Because if I just change the logo settings here, you'll notice we scroll up, it's gonna have that same look. So all we have to do is paste that in there and save that. And I tell you what we're gonna do just for the sake of keeping all this code nice and clean, we're gonna put the logo stuff together. So logos here, the fixed logo settings are there. And now once we save that and we clear our cache, we should see a nice overlapping logo. And when we zip down, there we go. It zips right into place. So it's that easy, guys. Just really these few lines of CSS, and this is going to be available to you, so you can take this and tweak it on your own. Again, I found this very useful for logos that are really vertical, like this one here. Uh, but there's one last thing I want to show you. Let's say you want to overlap the bottom. Let me show you a site here. Okay, so on this site here, you'll notice when I scroll down, the logo just overlaps the menu just a little bit, which gives it a kind of, you know, kind of a cool feel. So here's, that, here's what we want to do here. We're going to go ahead and re-inspect this. And let's give this a max height of, let's say, you know, let's just bump this up to like 150. There we go. So it's expanding over that. Now, of course, it's white, so you're not going to see that. So let me go ahead and go into the code here. We'll give this 150. Let me go ahead and add an image, which I just so happen to have an image ready for us. So let's go ahead and create a new section. And you could do this with the visual builder as well, but just for the sake of this, let, you know what, I tell you what, let's just add this image right into the section here. I'm gonna go to the background. I'm gonna give this a background image of these beautiful boats on a lovely ocean or lake. So we're gonna go ahead and update that now. Let's go out here. We're going to view the page. And there we go. You can see the logo expands over the top and the actual uh, section below it. Again, you're not going to use this in too many cases, but in this site right here, it worked out very well because the client had a very vertical logo. And you'll notice when we go back over to our site, we're going to scroll down and boom, that sits nicely snuggled into the actual menu itself. Now, you're probably asking yourself, okay, this is great, but what's this going to look like on mobile? A lot of times when you do custom CSS changes like this, it can really throw things out of whack for tablet and mobile view. So no worries, I'm gonna show you exactly what we're gonna to do to make sure this looks good on phones. First things first, I'm gonna go ahead and dive back into the style sheet. I'm gonna make this 100 pixels. That way the logo is not over expanding on this because again, I just wanted to show you just in case you had a really vertical logo and you wanted to try that out. So again, it looks really nice. Now let's go ahead and right click inspect element. And let's take a look at what this looks like on mobile. I'm gonna click the little toggle view for the device. 
And there we go. So it doesn't look terrible, but the logo is overlapping. Let me go ahead and zoom in for us a little bit here. So the logo is overlapping the phone number there for a little bit. So all we have to do is I'm gonna look into the logo settings here and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go ahead and play around with this. I'm gonna adjust the, the, uh, the max width height and I'm gonna bring this down to say, let's say 85 and then I'm just gonna adjust the top a little bit. Instead of negative 30, let's make it like negative 20. Don't look too bad. And actually, if I didn't want that overlapping at all on mobile, I'd probably make that zero and I'd give it a max height of, uh, we can adjust this a little bit. We could say, you know, maybe like 55 or something like that. Maybe a little more. Let's bump this up. Let's bump this up. Looks pretty good right there. You know, let's just go 70, make it an even number. So there we go. So now that I know what I want that logo to look like on mobile, I'm going to go into my style sheet. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a scary media query, which is gonna tell this logo to look like that size at 479. And I tell you what, we actually probably wanna do this for tablet views as well, so we actually wanna do this at 980. So let's go ahead and put 980 in there. And then, so basically what we're telling this is that we want that logo to drop to this size at 980. So it's gonna look good on pixels, or it's gonna look good on tablets and on phones. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead. And I tell you what, one more thing we'll do. Maybe this top header info here, I think maybe we could center that just because it's flow to line right right now. So let's take a peek at that. Let's look at ET info and it's floating right. Uh, let's do float none. There we go. Float none makes that perfectly centered and that looks pretty darn good on mobile. So now we're going to head and take this little chunk of code, ET info float none. We're going to put this right here. So this will look centered in the tablet and mobile view. And now let's go ahead and take a peek at this. So let's go ahead and refresh. And when I zoom my browser in, this should look good on tablet view. There we go. So it's actually floating. There we go. So once we hit 980, it'll go to the center. And then on mobile, there we go. Looks beautiful. And again, if you wanted to test this out a little further, you could just right click, inspect element, and click in here the responsive views. And you can see this to make sure it looks good. So we can always test it out there as well. So I hope this has helped, guys. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, enjoy being able to overlap your logo on the top menu and really playing around with it and having some fun. And again, you know, that you can just take this code and you can adjust the max height and the top margins to your liking. If you don't have the fixed nav, again, you don't have to worry about the Z index or anything like that. So depending on how you have your site set up, you'll be able to follow this tutorial and take this code and make it your own. So let me know if you guys have any questions. Otherwise, have a good time overlapping your logo and having some fun. Thanks, guys.